Hello, and welcome back to a Swift Look, a Taylor Swift show. I'm Zoe Jewell, and let's get into today's show. So raise your hand if you spent the weekend watching Taylor Swift, the Eras Tour, Taylor's version on Disney+. Plus. Okay, good. Same. Um, I honestly had it on pretty much the entire weekend. I'm sure like many of you did. I have loved seeing all of the TikTok videos, Instagram videos of Swifties sharing the concert experience with their partners, parents, especially the dads. I've loved seeing all the dads who maybe aren't necessarily Taylor Swift fans sitting down and watching the concert. It just, it fills me with so much joy. And I would love to know if you've shared the concert with somebody who's not a Swifty, have they since become a Swifty? And also what's their favorite era? Because I feel like for a lot of non-Swifties, their favorite era is reputation. I'd be curious what you guys have found out in your lives. But anyway, we're here to talk about so many other things going on in Taylor Swift's world, some news we've gotten over the weekend, some other kind of interesting things. Let's jump into the first story, um, which was actually reported over the weekend by Page Six that a major CEO <laughs> crashed Taylor and Travis's date night over the weekend. So here's what went down. Again, according to page six, Taylor and Travis were on a little secret date night at a members only club in LA called Bird Streets Club. Uh, it's a private club, as I said, so I don't think they allowed photographs. I don't think you can like have your phone out while you're there, which is why we probably didn't get any footage or content of them at, at this club. These places, there's, there, there's these places in LA, New York, like any sort of major big city. And they take this rule of no phones extremely seriously, um, which is good because I feel like celebrities like Taylor Swift deserve to be able to go out to dinner or, or go to places and not feel like they have a bunch of people just like with their phones out trying to get a picture. But apparently Disney CEO Bob Iger was quote fawning over Taylor and Travis. Um, and this source basically said, quote, Bob jumped up from his seat the minute Taylor walked in, which honestly, relatable. It is sort of funny to think of Bob Iger, CEO, worth so much money, like being incredibly, I don't know if he was starstruck, but like feeling this need to immediately go over and talk to Taylor Swift. Um, that's just kind of a funny thing because there's probably not that many people Bob Iger does that for or to. Um, but as I mentioned earlier in the show, Taylor's Taylor's new concert movie premiered on Disney Plus last week. So it makes sense. It's the perfect time for someone like Bob, Bob Iger to go over to Taylor Swift and be like, oh my gosh, congratulations on the release of the concert. Um, thanks for being on Disney Plus. Like, thanks for making me a bunch of money. That's probably what he said to her. Um, and also... Taylor and Travis were apparently with another couple, though they didn't, this this article didn't specify or say who that other couple was. So my money is just, I don't know why, but my my guess would be it was Miles Teller and Kelly Teller, just because I know that they're both friends with each of them. Um, we don't know. And I feel like Miles Teller is famous enough that the article would have said if they were with Miles Teller, but apparently not. Anyway, Thought that was funny. Also love that they went on this little date night, had this moment to themselves. And like I said last week, Taylor and Travis have really been on the down low in the last week or so, like just been very low key, very private, very quiet, which um, is nice. And I think Taylor is very smart about knowing like when to come out of hiding and like be in public and show her face and when not to. And I think because she obviously had like the last, I mean, the first few months of the year with like all the football and then her back on tour. It's like, it's been a lot of Taylor, 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 Taylor. And then obviously next month, we're going to get a lot of Taylor with her new album. So I think she's probably in her head like, okay, the public kind of might need a bit of a break from me. I mean, I certainly don't, but I think the general public. So I'm going to kind of be low key for a bit. And then in a few weeks, I'll reemerge. Um, just so that people don't get fatigued. She's very, very good about that. And she kind of like always knows how to handle those situations super, super well. Um, another thing that came out over like the weekend that I thought was so funny was 
Barry Keoghan, actor Barry Keoghan, probably most famous right now for being the star of the movie Saltburn, but he's been in a, t- in a ton of stuff. He's like definitely an up and coming star actor, Irish actor. Barry is dating, for those who don't know, though I'm sure you do, he's dating Sabrina Carpenter, singer Sabrina Carpenter, who has been Taylor Swift's tour opener for the last handful of months. She was their opener in South America, um, Australia, Japan, Singapore. And Barry posted a photo of himself with Travis Kelsey from the Justin Timberlake concert last week. And it kind of broke the internet because I'm sure we're all familiar with the term WAGs, right? That we use for talking about um, specifically athletes, wives, and girlfriends. That's what WAGs stands for. But this was a photo of the Habs, husbands and boyfriends. Uh, and also I saw a lot of tweets that said like, the, the, these are the first, like the first ladies of um, the Eras tour, <laughs> which is, which is funny. Um, also the height difference, the height difference between Taylor and Sabrina is extreme. I think Sabrina Carpenter is like maybe just barely five feet tall and Taylor's obviously like 5'10". And then the height difference between Travis and Barry is like, is almost a foot. I think Barry is maybe like 5'8". And we know Travis Kelsey's like 6'5". Um, so love the photo. I thought it was very funny. And I'm just happy that they met. And also like, again, in what world would Barry Keoghan and Travis Kelsey meet and hang out other than the fact that like Taylor Swift has brought them together? It's very, very, it's just a, it's just a crazy world we live in. Um, okay. And then to wrap up today's show, we got a little bit of um, the tortured poets department information. We got we, we now just have a little bit more insight into what the album is going to offer us. So the album is now available for pre-order, for pre-save on Apple Music. And because it's now available for pre-order, we have a little bit more information about the album. So it has been listed as a, in terms of the genre, a pop rock album, which is interesting because she's done pop a lot. Um, Midnight's was a pop album. But rock, she hasn't really dabbled in that since like, in my opinion, the Speak Now Red era. It's been a while since she's had like real rock music. I mean, and I don't know if you could even say that Speak Now or Red has real rock music in quotes. It's pop, it's it's pop, pop rock. So this makes me really interested. I'm very curious. And I am a huge fan of the Speak Now Red type of music. So for going back to that kind of style, I'm fully on board. Um, We also now know the songs that have been listed as explicit. So the songs that are going to have a lot of curse words, and I will read them out to you. The Torture Poets Department, Down Bad, But Daddy I Love Him, L-O-M-L, Love of My Life, Florida, I Can Do It With a Broken Heart, and The Smallest Man Who Ever Lived. So those are the songs that are explicit. So we're going to get a little cursing. We're going to get, I mean, and she's basically, she's since like the folklore evermore era. She's now not afraid to throw in a bad word. She's not afraid to curse. She goes for it. So I think this is not anything crazy, um, but it gives us a little insight into like the energy that she might be exuding in, in her music. We also know that the album title is officially in all caps. So it's t- the, the Torture Poets d- d- Department and like, you know, very, I don't know, I feel like when something's in all caps, it kind of means like loud um, and sort of in your face. And obviously like Folklore Evermore were lowercase albums, which are like quieter, more kind of like, you know, moody in a sense. So I feel like Taylor, this is intentional. She's not someone who just does stuff to does stuff. There's a reason for it. And I think the reason is because it's like, this album is kind of coming for you or it's coming for somebody. And I think we know who that somebody is is. Um, all right, guys, that's it for today's show. Please let me know all your thoughts on all the stories um, and what we talked about today. Let me know if you've watched the Eras tour on Disney+, Plus. what you think of the Torture Poets Department information, all that good stuff. Make sure to subscribe to our channel. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.